death is close. Your courage will fail. Your friends will abandon you. Your heart will explode. You will die. Hey guys, and welcome back to another boss guide for World of Warcraft. This week, we'll be going over one of the hardest raid encounters in vanilla, featuring the ultimate and final boss VQ40, Cthune. Cthune's I-Beam is the first ability that players will encounter, which hits his first aggro target three times, before switching to a random player. It's important to remember that if players are close together, the I-Beam will chain and deal double the damage of the previous one and go on forever until the chain is broken. Players must stay spread out while also using greater nature protection potions to mitigate the damage from this ability. Dark Lair is Cthulhu's most dangerous ability in the form of a channel beam that kills anything it touches. Cthulhu will target a random location and begin channeling its ability for several seconds before activating Dark Lair, and rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise around the room for 35 seconds, which forces players to switch their locations. Every 45 seconds during Phase 1, a ring of eye tentacles will spawn around Cthulhu and begin using Mind Flay on random players dealing moderate shadow damage and slowing their movement speed. It's recommended to use a Greater Shadow Protection Potion before the fight starts to absorb this ability. Keep in mind that they are vulnerable to interruption abilities such as counter spell or stuns, and it's important that your DPS kill these as soon as possible. At the same time during Phase 1, Claw Tentacles will spawn throughout the room, rupturing the ground under players that deals roughly 1300 to 1600 damage while also knocking them back. Despite their weak damage, they can overrun your raid if left alone, while also disrupting players with their hamstring and knockback abilities. Finally, if no players are in their melee range, then they will disappear and target another player. Raid positioning for Cthulhu will make or break this fight as personal responsibility plays a huge role during both Phase 1 and Phase 2. Shown on the map is the proper arrangement of your raid group once everyone is in the room. Start off first by reorganizing your raid so that each group has one melee DPS, one ranged DPS, and a healer. The last two slots will be your choice depending on your raid composition. Finally, keep in mind that add-ons such as Cthulhu Warner can help your raid when inside the room to show if you're properly spread out from other players. To better visualize this scenario, we can use placeholder models to show where each player should be located at during the fight. The first ring around Cthulhu should be the melee DPS, however, exceptions to this are guilds with a heavy melee roster. They might stack their melee players together to increase raid DPS at the expense of more raid damage. While other guilds will rotate melee players in and out of safe zones during the fight. The second ring will primarily consist of your ranged DPS, while the final and outer ring of players should be made up of your healers and tanks. However, getting into the room is a different problem as the goal is to get inside without an I-beam killing your entire raid. Coming up next, we'll cover two ways to get your raid inside the room. Start with having your odd groups 1, 3, 5, and 7 on the left side of the entrance, while even groups 2, 4, 6, and 8 will be on the right side of the entrance. Option 1 involves having your main tank peek around the corner so that Cthulhu targets him or her first. The main tank will then run down the hallway, away from the raid, while everyone else rushes into the room and toward their spots. By the time Cthulhu targets random players, everyone should be at their spots. Option 2 involves the same start, but the difference is that the even and odd groups will travel together along the edges of the Black Fire. Once a player is marked by Cthulhu, then they'll move out of the group, while the other players distance themselves to reduce the chances of a chain effect. With option 1, it requires less coordination, but the downside is possibly random casualties due to 40 players running throughout the room at the same time. While with option 2, it requires a lot of coordination and trust, as one mistake can lead to a raid wipe, but the benefit is getting everyone into the room alive if it can be pulled off. For this last section regarding phase 1, it's incredibly important that every player in your raid knows that during Dark Lair, everyone must move to their opposite positions. So if you were located here, then you would be here after Dark Lair ends. During the second Dark Lair, you would move again, which ends up being your original spot. 
The reason behind doing this is because Dark Lair tries to disrupt your raid's positioning, and repeating these rotations makes sure that everyone is properly spread out during the entire fight. Phase 2 begins after the Eye of Dune dies, as he begins to reveal his true form. During this phase, time will start running out for your raid as new dangers begin to emerge that will test the skill of every player. Cthulhu will also place a shield over himself, reducing all damage done to him by 99%. Giant Claw tentacles will begin spawning every minute with a ground rupture under the feet of a random player. These ruptures deal a heavier 3000 to 4000 damage, and along with their high base damage and thrash ability, your tanks will be getting hit very hard, and anyone else will be instantly killed by their attacks. Also, keep in mind that one of these will always spawn after phase 1 ends, as well as always spawning after a weakened phase. Lastly, keep in mind that they are vulnerable to being stunned. Also spawning every minute with a 30 second offset from giant claws, or the giant eye tentacles that have the same eye beam ability from phase 1. Fortunately, they are vulnerable to a wide variety of CC and stun locking effects, such as kidney shots, counter spell, death coil, and so on. It's important to keep these shut down while staying spread out, as one bad eye beam can lead to a raid wipe. Finally, eye tangles will now spawn every 30 seconds, and these will always be your first priority targets before switching to something else. Coming up next, we'll cover Cthulhu's weakness, leading to the end of this encounter. Throughout Phase 2, players in your raid will be randomly devoured and teleported into Cthulhu's stomach. Inside of the stomach are three islands, with a jump pad in the middle leading to the surface, and two flesh tentacles nearby. Players will also receive a stacking debuff called Digestive Acid that deals the low nature damage over time before slowly ramping up the longer you stay in the stomach. The objective is to kill both tentacles, which will lower the shield on Cthulhu so that your raid can damage him. However, due to the random nature of who gets into the stomach, each player has to act differently depending on their role and class. Tanks should exit the stomach immediately and head back to the surface since they'll be needed for bigger issues. Healers should exit as fast as possible, but make sure to top off DPS players on your way out. DPS will have the critical role of killing the tentacles while also coordinating with the raid up top because it's preferred to weaken Cthulhu when the surface is clear of ads. Melee DPS will be at a slight disadvantage as they'll be taking damage from both digestive acid and the tentacles. While ranged DPS have the highest advantage, as the only source of damage they will take in the stomach is from digestive acid. Finally, make sure to occasionally watch your health. If you start taking too much damage, then back out and let other players finish the job. Once the tentacles in the stomach have been destroyed, Cthulhu will become vulnerable for 45 seconds and all adds will stop spawning during this time. With the shield down, your raid is then able to fully damage Cthulhu. Ideally, before Cthulhu becomes vulnerable, debuffs such as Thunder Armor, Fairy Fire, Curses, etc. should already be up to maximize your raid's DPS. The goal should be to reduce his health by half during the first vulnerability to reduce the length of the fight before eventually leading to your raid, defeating Cthulhu. The fight starts with the tank peeking around the corner to get Cthulhu's aggro as everyone else has inside. Using option 2, we wait for the first marked target before quickly moving to our spots. Now with all 40 players inside the room, phase 1 becomes a matter of staying spread out and clearing ads as they pop up around you. During the first star glare, we make sure to kill the eye tangles first to stop them from slowing players down while also rotating to our opposite spots. From this point, phase 1 becomes a matter of watching your distance from other players, killing each wave of eye tentacles and any nearby claw tentacles. During progression, guilds should aim for only having to go through 2 or 3 dark glares as it's important to push to phase 2 while keeping the majority of your raiders alive. During the second dark lair, we're able to kill the eye before Cthulhu finishes channeling the ability, and once phase 1 ends, we move to the entrance to control the spawn with the first giant claw. Quickly taking it down and tossing a soul stone on one of our off tanks, we then move back to our original spots from phase 1. However, as I get to my spots, my character is suddenly devoured and teleported into the stomach. Tossing up dots and curses, I try to maximize my DPS on the tentacles while also using a greater nature pot so I can stay in longer. At this point, it's best to communicate with your raid on the surface to see if it's clear to get a good vulnerability phase while also keeping track of your health pool. 
However, after taking 10 stacks from the debuff, I have to back out and let someone else finish the job. Back on the surface, a wave of eye tentacles spawn, followed by a giant eye. During phase 2, the eye tentacle should always be your first priority, followed then by the giant claw or eye. During the first vulnerability, our raid uses all of our available cooldowns to push for ending the encounter as fast as possible, because the longer the fight goes on, the harder it gets due to attrition and so many things chipping away at your raid. Once the vulnerability ends after 45 seconds, remember that a giant claw always spawns afterward, so our raid groups together again to control the spawn before moving back to our original spots. Now that we've gone through all the steps, phase 2 becomes a matter of surviving each wave of tentacles, followed by either a giant claw or eye, while waiting for players in the stomach to destroy the tentacles down there. Also, if the giant eye spawns far away, it's best to let the groups on that side of the room take care of it, as too many players crowding together could be bad if an eye beam gets through. With the second vulnerability, the encounter comes to an end, but despite our knowledge and experience that we have today, the fight is still challenging, even though it was created over a decade ago. To sum it up, AQ40 represents a huge milestone in vanilla, with its leap in difficulty and mechanics compared to Molten Core and Blackman Lair. And to this day, Cthulhu is still one of my favorite fights, and one of the hardest encounters that players will go through in vanilla World of Warcraft. But aside from that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's content, be sure to like and subscribe for more.